By the end of this video, you're going to have all the skills to build your very own RAG AI agent and integrate it with this modern UI. Even if you're just starting out as a complete beginner, without having to write a single line of code, you can do this. So what is a RAG AI agent? Let's start with an example. This is the Laws of the Game document. It's 230 pages and explains all the rules of football. And if I wanted to find out some sort of rule, I would have to go through it. Instead of doing that, what I can do is use a RAG AI agent. And when you combine it with Lovable, you can create a clean, modern interface, just like this one. This is a official rules ref, and when I put a message in, it is going to query the rules of the game, and I can get a quick response. So let's ask a question. So my question is, is there a specific rule for when the captain of the team is also the goalkeeper? And here we have our response. Yes, there is a specific rule for when the captain of the team is the goalkeeper, and it goes through it here. Now, we could ask any question. Probably one of the most common ones in soccer is, what is offside? So then we have our explanation of what offside is. And this is really what's happening. The Retrieval Augmented Generation System, or RAG, it combines a retrieval system with generative AI to provide access to external knowledge for more accurate and factual answers beyond what a typical AI model might have. And it works basically like I've shown. User asks a question, the system retrieves the document from the knowledge base, AI reads it, and it generates an informed response. And why would you use it? Well, it provides up-to-date domain-specific answers. All right, so the first step in the process is to build our RAG agent using N8N. So there are two parts to it. This lower section here is actually the first part, and this is where we load our knowledge or our data source into this Superbase vector store. And the second part is where we use a webhook to send a chat message to the agent, which will connect down through to the Superbase vector store and return that response to our front end. So the first step is create a new N8N workflow. So let's do that and add our first node. All right, the first node we're going to need is our Google download a document node. So we want to download a file. And you can see as soon as I do this, it actually adds a trigger, which is fine. So I'll just move this. And if you don't know how to configure Google or Google Drive, to your N8N, I'll put a link above just here. It only takes a couple of minutes using the Google Cloud and then you're all sorted. But once you have that done, or if you already have it done, it's pretty easy. We can just select our file. So from the file list here, I've just grabbed laws of the game and that's in my Google Drive account. And that's the PDF that's got 230 odd pages. Now for our next step, we need a Superbase vector store. So we can just click the plus button, type in Superbase. Click on Superbase Vector Store, and we want to add documents to a vector store. And then you want to add a new credential. You just press the pencil icon, and this will open up. So it's a Superbase account. Maybe give it a name. So I'm going to call it 218 Demo. And then it asks for the Superbase host and the service role key. So I'm going to go over to Superbase. All I've done here is I've just created a new project. I haven't done anything else. So it only takes about a minute to do. Just go to superbase.com. You can actually create two projects for free. So if you've not used Superbase, it won't cost you anything. Once this is spun up, go down to the project settings here and then go to data API. And we can see there's this URL. So we're just going to copy that and paste that over here. We'll go back to Superbase. And if we go to API keys, we want this one here, service role key secret. So I'm going to reveal it and then I'm going to copy it and then paste it in the service role key. Now, when you press save, it should say you're connected. Connection tested successfully, so we're all good. Now we need to connect N8N to our Superbase vector store. So if you click on table name and you click on here, you'll see there's no results. So what we need to do is go up here and click on docs. And then luckily for us, they've got this quick start guide. So just click on that. It'll open up this. Then you just want to copy this SQL here, and then we go back to Superbase. Now, don't worry about all this. It, it looks kind of complex, but it's not. Once you've copied that code block, you just want to go over to the 
menu here and click on SQL Editor. Now I'm just going to paste it in. All you need to do is press Run. And you can see success, no rows returned. Now back over in N8N, if we click on the table name again, we should see documents and that's the one we want. Next, we want to add our embeddings. So just click on here and we'll go with embeddings with OpenAI. And we want this text embedding three small. So that is all we need to do there. And then we need to click on this one here for our loader. We're going to use the default data loader. The only thing we need to change here is the data type. The PDF will come in as binary. We just set that to binary and that should be okay. And now if we run this, we're going to have our laws of soccer or football, and it's going to be loaded up into our vector database. So let's just run it. And what Superbase, the vector store has done, it has broken that document up into 305 items. So next we need to add our workflow. So our front end can query our vector store. And to do that, we're going to use a webhook. So we'll just go plus up here, type in webhook. And with a webhook, we're going to get two URLs. We've got a test URL and a production URL. I want you to take a copy of both because we're going to need these in the next step when we build our front end. The other thing you need to do on, on this node is in, in this respond, it needs to be changed to respond using the webhook node. And this needs to be a post request. So we can move that up here. Okay, so next we need to use a set node to set the incoming data. So we'll just go to set, set fields. We want to add one here and we're going to call this session ID. And the value will be json.body.email. And we're going to add another one called message. And its value is going to be json.body.message. And that is all we need to do on that one. And then we're going to add our AI agent. And then all we need to do is change this to define below. And we will add in the prompt is json.message. We can close this one down. Then we give our AI agent a brain. So we'll just choose open AI. And I'll stay with GPT 4.1 mini for that. So nothing else to do here. And then we need to add a tool, which is going to be the connection to our Superbase vector. Now in here, we need to give it a description. So I'm going to put something like use to read the FIFA laws of the game. And from the table name, we will just select document. Now, what we can do now is for the embedding, we can grab this and we can connect it straight down to our embedding model. And that is all hooked up. Okay, now we only have two nodes to go and we're actually finished. So we need some memory. So we click on this one and we'll just go with simple memory. And we just want to change this to define below and add in here json.sessionid and that's going to grab that parameter we set previously which is going to be the user's email address and what this does is it maintains context and I will show you in an example a little bit later why this is so important. And the final node is the respond to webhook. So respond to webhook and that is all we need to do. So effectively our RAG AI agent is all set up. We've loaded in a document and now we've set up a workflow where a front end can query this workflow. So we can send a webhook, send that data, send the chat with an email. It's going to go to the AI agent and it's going to go down through to this embeddings to get the response if it's related to FIFA and the soccer rules. And then using the AI's brain, it'll articulate a response and it'll return it to us. So the next step is we're going to use Lovable to build the front end to send the webhook and receive the response. If you want to speed up this process a bit, head to Online Ninja AI and go to the classroom here, which is what I'm in. Scroll down and you'll get to Demo PRDs. You'll find this folder here, which is RAG AI Customer Service. 
click on this one here, AI Customer Service PRD, and just take a copy of this. When you've got a copy of it, head over to Lovable. So over in Lovable, I've pasted in that PRD. Now I can hit Build, and we should be able to get a UI spun up pretty quick. Okay, so Lovable has built the app. Now we can test it out. There is a sign-in screen. You can modify and change this if you like. The reason for this is we want to track a session ID, so we need something unique. And we're going to use the user's email in when they, when they enter this app. We're logged in, we're authenticated. Now we're in test mode here. So in order to be able to actually send a request and see if it's going to work, we need to actually activate the the workflow over in Ed8N. So this has all been done unedited. So whether this works or not, I don't know, but we'll give it a go. So if I go back over into the to the workflow, you can see because we have two workflows here, you, there's a choice. We can execute the workflow from a webhook or you can choose the other one. We're going to stay with the workflow from webhook. So if I execute this, it says waiting for you to call the test URL. Let's find out whether it's configured it correctly. In this document that I provided from, from school, you will notice in it that it it does have a section for the for the webhooks. And when you paste it in, you want to just re replace this with the actual webhook you get from N8N, which is in this node. Anyway, it's waiting. Whether this works or not, who knows? But if it doesn't, it won't be very hard to fix. So we'll ask it... What is a corner kick? Now, that is pretty incredible. If I go back over to N8N, you can see this is run. I have built this with just one prompt. It's given us an application with the authentication. And the, re the only reason I'm authenticating is so we can maintain context. And you'll recall, when we were in here, we added this memory. And this is what's going to retain what we've asked and some details for a set number of iterations just to keep that, that context going. And if we want to test this out, it's pretty easy. We just go up the top here and we're going to activate this workflow. And so now when we go back over into Lovable, we just need to toggle this across to production. Now, if I type a message and say, what is a corner kick? Great, so we get that answer. Now I'm just going to say, my name is Ben. Okay, now if I say, what is my name? My name is Ben. So it understands context and it keeps that for a number of iterations so that you can have this conversational AI, which is an expert in the domain knowledge that you load into your RAG AI agent. If you want to do this quick and the easy way, just head over to Online Ninja. If you're into AI coding, automation, and SEO, this is a really great place to hang out. It's a great community with excellent resources and tools to help get the job done a lot quicker. It'll be the first link in the description. Check it out.